Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello. <laughs> I'm making this tutorial about naming Live 2D layers. This is especially helpful for model artists. Some Live 2D riggers and modelers may benefit from this video. However, um, a lot of model artists do not know how to set up the layer names for Live 2D. So please keep watching if you need to know about this. <laughs> so first off, if you look at um, my model on the screen here, you can see I've already set it up with right and left. So our left hand side, the one here, is not in fact left. It is right and the our right is not right. It is left. It seems a little confusing at first, but what you have to consider is that this is being viewed from the model's perspective. And this mainly relates to how parameters are set up in Live 2D and also how tracking works with VTube Studio and other programs. It is not the worst thing in the world if you accidentally name things on this part left and this part right. It's not the end of the world, however it is mostly accepted by the Live 2D community that this is the correct way to name your layers. Um, if you need to see a little bit more information, I'll link Nonon's tweet in the description. Um, it's pretty helpful. <laughs> but that's basically the first thing you need to remember when naming your layers. So I'm going to quickly jump into VTube Studio to show one of the reasons why you should name your layers well for Live 2D to sh and show you my mistakes. So when I first drew this model, I wasn't aware of a certain part of naming for Live 2D. And so I'll show you why it matters. So in the newer update for VTube Studio, you can change some of the colors on your model with this customize model area here. And if we do customize multiply or screen color for art meshes, Keyword here being art meshes, which is basically what a layer is to Live 2D. If we click that, you will see art mesh, art mesh 0, 2, 3, 1, 4, 10, 11, 13, 14. This is not ideal. It's not, once again, not the end of the world. But when I want to customize a certain part of my model, of course, you can click on here, right? But wouldn't this be a whole lot easier if I knew which one of these for certain was the middle part, although I do know it's the middle part here. Maybe this is better. Art Mesh 80, right? If if it, it had a name here that properly corresponded to what I'm clicking on, I think this is just a lot easier to use, especially if you have a model with a lot more layers, because my model is somewhat simplistic compared to others. So it could come up with a whole list of things and you're like, which one is it, right? So what you can do here really quickly is you can change the color. And a lot of people have been using this to have sort of different modes on their model pretty easily um, without having to change the actual Live 2D model itself. So let's try and make me blonde. <laughs> this, this is not, this not terrible. It, it could be better, but eh, this is the blonde, right? And then if you had to go through every hair piece and the all named art mesh 85, 72, it can get a little bit confusing. So that's why the next part of naming your layers in Life 2D for me is very important. So next I'll tell you how to avoid what I did and try and get your art meshes IDs to automatically generate how they should be. So if we look at Nanon's tweet here, I'm going to mainly be talking about English speaking model artists because if you're a Japanese speaker, it makes sense to use the kanji here, especially because the rest of your layers will be in Japanese as well. Um, so the first one is the kanji for right and left. Probably you won't be using these. Number two is R and L, which stands for obviously right and left. Um, you don't have to worry about abbreviating these because any Live 2D model rigger will know what it means. They're, like It's in context, it's pretty obvious. Number three are the arrows. I like these quite a lot personally. Um, if you want to type them out, if you have a Japanese keyboard, 
you can type migi and it comes up with the arrow for right and if you type hidari it comes up for the arrow for left that's the easiest way to type them out for me otherwise you could have them on like a sticky note somewhere on your computer that is easy to copy paste from if you want to use these however i don't use these for layer and names in particular and i'll explain in a second the last one is typing out right and left as full words i you can do this if you want to but there's no real need when you have r and l because it's just a little bit too much work when you can already do it with one letter so the reason i wouldn't use personally japanese or the symbols the arrows is because when you use these special characters and import it to live 2d it will do what it did before i showed you and automatically generate a um names like art mesh it's 64 something like that right and it will do it for every layer that has a special character in it so for example if you had l i top I don't know, just, just something like this, right? If you imported this name here into Live2D, the ArtMesh ID will generate to LI top. It won't be ArtMesh 305 or something like that, okay? And the other major part I want to say is don't use spaces, please. <laughs> like I'll put this in big words. This is, this is the problem that I had. So I didn't realize when I was um, making my model artwork that if you use spaces that is considered kind of a special character and it will automatically generate the art mesh like art mesh 5224, right? So instead, name your layer something like this. For example, for the mouse, mouse line up. Her or this is what I normally do like you can do whatever you want but having underscores instead will fix this problem so please don't use spaces use underscores okay that's the main takeaway I want everyone to have from this so yeah use underscores some other abbreviations I've seen people use for live 2d are M equals middle <laughs> miss missile <laughs> um, uh, c equals center t is top mm, and then b bottom but if you are going to use some abbreviations like this i would say maybe make a note of it somewhere just so the person who is working with the model knows. And if you're going to use an abbreviation for anything else, like I've also seen actually H hair, right? Or E is for uh, something like that. But this can be kind of confusing because E could also be for ear. So if you're going to use these abbreviations for yourself, make sure that you make a note of it for the modeler and please try and be as descriptive as possible in the layer you can use abbreviations like this if you need to but like i said make sure you have like a sort of key somewhere but it doesn't help the live 2d model rigor if you use these abbreviations and don't really explain it and then it says something like for example h c t one and you're like what what does that mean <laughs> what does that mean i have no idea what that means so just let let the person know what how you were naming your layers it is easier to use abbreviations especially with models that have 600 plus layers and i know that they exist so do your best <laughs> and the last thing i want to say is if you make a mistake naming a layer or you forget to name one layer don't feel too bad it's not that big a de of a deal if you make a couple of mistakes it's to be expected but try your best to accommodate for the live 2d rigor because 
it can be a really hard job if every layer is like layer 253, right? Nobody knows what that means essentially, so just be kind. <laughs> And I think that's everything, so thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.